Winter smallmouth in a river setting tend to eat smaller profiled baits such as this one, a Winko's Chili Willy. Today I'm going to give these uh, paddle tails a shot. This is one I poured with a, a do-it mold called a worm nose jig. The reason I chose this one is for how it orients the bait. I poured the soft plastics the paddle tail grubs with a really soft, soft pour. And what that does is it really gives the, the bait some buoyancy. So that should lift up like that. And that style jig head really lends itself to that presentation with the jig head down and the tail and the hook up. All right, I got a new mold from Do It here that I'm gonna try with the uh, these little paddle tail grubs I've been doing real well with up on the Susquehanna. This is called a worm nose jig. All right, now that we have the jig heads all done, we're gonna powder paint them. I've got some Protec powder paint here. This one, I got all kinds of colors. This one's a uh, purple. Heat it up, dip it in there, and I got a nice purple head. I take these and I'll I'll set them up in this, uh, it's an old um, toaster oven. That I just put them on the rack and that helps cure them. You know, I'll cook those for you know, I'll just turn it all the way um, to broil and let those suckers cure. Here's another color I got. This one's Super Glow Blue. They, they actually have these things that are, uh, that are glow in the dark. Now, if, they, if it gets clumpy like that, what you want to do is just tap the bottom of it. tap it to the side a little bit and that just loosens it up so it goes on there nice and easy. You don't want to grind it in there you just kind of want to do a little half circle. Right up in that the eddy of the bridge piling there it's sort of lethargic here because in this cold weather But it was a very, very crisp, singular thumb. My rod of choice for this presentation of the, the paddle tail is a St. Croix Legend Tournament slip stick. Uh, this is actually one that's, that's made for walleye fishing, but uh, it does just fine for me catching smallmouth out of the river here. It's an 8-foot medium light power, fast action. Uh, a lot of guys would kind of scratch their head why I would need an eight foot rod. And um, I think it's, you know, I, I found myself feeling more comfortable with longer and longer rods. And I think the reason for that, for this presentation specifically, is that you need a longer rod to, to get the elevation to get unsnagged. When you're standing on a on the deck of a, uh, a bass boat or jet boat or even a raft you're at a much higher vantage point to to get those those snags you know to pop off uh, when you're low in a kayak like this you need these longer rods um, <clears throat> one trick that i've that i've learned that really helps me free these these snags much more besides having an eight foot rod 
is to when I do snag up, you know, I don't I don't tug on it real hard. Um, I'll open the bale right where I am, let line out, and get my arms up just to give get the the line. You know, instead of being at this angle, it's going to be up at this angle, and usually that's enough to lift it up and over whatever it is snagged on. When you're when you're dragging a bait like we're dragging today, either with you know a, a ball head on it or a football jig or even a tube, you're going to get snagged a lot during the day. And if you're not getting snagged, then you're not on the bottom, so you need to you know put some more weight on. But once I unsnag it, I usually let, keep fishing the bait. A lot of guys will reel it back in real quick. I'll keep fishing it because if you pop it off the bottom, sometimes that react, you know, the, the fish will react to that and hit it, and you actually get a strike right after you free your bait. So, you know, you get snagged, unsnagged, you get a bite. I mean, that's a bonus right there, you know. Oh, he is nice. He is. He's a fat one. Woo. Just engulfed it. Just engulfed it. It's another one. Again, cold day, 43 degrees, nice slow presentations. Picking up fish, picking them up slowly but surely. This one, I, I didn't even feel him. He was the other fish I've been feeling had tapped the bait. I felt a tap. This one, actually, I just just basically felt weight on the end, just like mushy leaves, just weight on the end of my line, and he was there. Nice big one. Even with a longer rod like this to get to get all these uh, the paddle tails unstuck from the bottom, uh, you do go through them. And having a, a do it mold and and you know coming up with the right hook, uh, jig head, and and soft plastic combination that you like, and really making them uh, expendable because you you know you can just if you lose a bunch in a day, it, it doesn't cost much to go home and and uh, pour up a couple more. Uh, having baits be expendable it, it really allows you to put them in uh, some situations like some of the, the brush on the shoreline that you may not want to do if you're paying you know uh, 50 60 cents a jig head or you know however much you'd pay for the the soft plastic making stuff on your own really um, really allows you to have the freedom of putting a bait wherever you want to do it and uh, you know, for that reason, I'm I'm glad that I have you know some do-it molds to uh, to make these baits expendable. For those less inclined to tinker, Juan has an alternative. I just pulled my 12th fish out of this wintering wintering area here with this particular bait. It's a Winko's Chili Willy made by Winko's Custom Lures. I've just started fishing this bait really about three weeks ago. Um, it's a, it's a uh, bait that imitates a minnow, really. If you look at it, it's got a very flexible tail on it. And this flexible tail, even when the bait's at rest, provides action to the bait. And what I'm doing out here, there's a series of ledges. And all I'm doing with the bait is I'm drifting with the current and using my paddling, one-handed paddling technique to slow myself a little bit. And I'm actually dragging this bait over the ledges. And you can see it'll, it'll rest on the ledge. The current will make the, the uh, tail move, but then I'm dragging it and letting it drop down into the ledge trench. When it's dropping down in the ledge trench, I'm just letting it sit. I'm letting it sit for 10, 15, 20 seconds. Tell you all this fish off for being so cold. Wow. Got him right on the outside of the lip again, too. <clears throat> that kind of, it's telling of how how short they're hitting it. I don't yeah. think they open their mouths all the way. And that's why you need a bait that's that small. Yeah, it's compact. They're just they're just mouthing the bait almost. They're not, you know, they're not sucking it in. Yeah. They're just mouthing the bait. Nice. I'd like to thank Do It Molds for sponsoring this video. My new DVD, River Kayak Fishing Skills, will be available February of 2011 at the kayakbassfishing.com store. This first DVD will be followed up by four seasonal patterns DVDs for river smallmouth, including material similar to what you just viewed. Stay tuned to the Kayak Bass Fishing channel for more previews.